this report. Retail businesses across the state of Texas can now open for what's being described as retail to go. Essentially, customers can come here curbside and pick up items. This is what the governor has described as a phased approach of reopening the Texas economy. But businesses across the state are kind of scrambling, trying to figure out how to make this work in a safe way. Here at Good Records Vinyl Records Store, we met Chris Penn, who has owned this store for about 20 years. He is apprehensive about opening up. He's got two other employees besides himself. He's not letting them work. He's doing it all because he's worried about his employees getting infected with coronavirus. He's worried about bringing the infection home. And you can see he's wearing a mask, a hat, a, a bodysuit, and gloves as he brings out items to his customers. Uh, but he says he needed to open. He says that opening a vinyl store is not the highway to becoming rich. And every day he can be open is vital to him but he hopes he's doing this in a safe way. I want us to take care of our citizens first and foremost. You know, the economy we can figure out later, but I just don't want to, we open everything back up fully and then we're shut down in another month or two and it's, and we've lost a lot more lives. But if they are smart and listen to science and, and roll things out slowly, then it can work. But I mean, we may remain closed to the public until I feel good about it. Chris Penn also told us that he's applied for that small business stimulus money, but so far none of that has come through for him. His application hasn't been approved. Governor Greg Abbott here in Texas is also saying that on Monday he will announce even more openings for many different types of businesses on Monday. Very similar to what we've seen uh, the governor of Oklahoma already doing, where he's opened up hair salons and barber shops and that sort of thing. And by early May, these governors are talking about uh, movie theaters, bowling alleys, that tattoo parlors, those types of businesses could also be open in the next week and a half or so. So uh, dramatic changes here unfolding in Texas and in Oklahoma, where many people are concerned uh, that opening up the economy is still too quick and they're worried that this could cause a resurgence of the coronavirus in states like Texas and Oklahoma. Ed Lavendera, CNN, Dallas. Well, the U.S. state of Oklahoma is now in a phased reopening. Some businesses were allowed to reopen Friday, including hair and nail salons and pet grooming services. On May 1st, churches, gyms, theatres and restaurants can open. Well, Clay Clark is co-founder and CEO of the Elephant in the Room Salon in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he joins us now. Clay, great to have you with us. You are a supporter of your state reopening, is that right? That is correct. Tell me why. What is the urgency? Well, uh, initially, when uh, Neil Ferguson, the, the, the director of the Abdul Latif Jamil Institute, predicted 2.2 million American deaths, that was a very scary number. And then Dr. Deborah Burks then reported that uh, 88,000 uh, predicted, predicted deaths were to occur, which is uh, still not a good number, but less or about the same as the number of uh, deaths from the, the flu in 2017, 2018. And although... Um, Every life matters. Um, I don't believe fundamentally in hiding from the virus until every American business is killed from the coronavirus. So, uh, Clay, you are a business owner. Is, is that correct? Yes, me. Yeah, since the age of 16. Okay, so you, this is my 23rd year. Yeah. And, and so you have employees. How do your employees feel about going back to work? I would say about 85% of them walk with a full faith and excitement about the opportunity to uh, serve our customers. And I would say objectively about 15% of them are very afraid of the coronavirus and uh, do not want to return to work. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it's obviously not out of greed that these people want to go back to work, but, but, but out of necessity. People need a paycheck. People need to pay their rent. Yeah. They need to pay their mortgages. They need to pay for their food bills. But what happens if small business owners like yourself what happens if uh, your employees, what happens if they get sick? Well, right now, if you look at the data coming out of the uh, CDC as it relates to Italy and New York, somewhere between 94 and 99.2 percent of all the deaths related to the coronavirus involve elderly people with an already compromised immune system. So we have a younger employee base, you know, people in their 20s, 30s and 40s, and our customers uh, fit that same demographic. So I think if we have elderly people with compromised immune systems, I would encourage them not to come in and get a haircut. 
Uh, and I'd encourage our employees and customers to not go to the nursing home after getting a haircut to fellowship with people who have compromised immune systems and who are elderly. But I, I really don't think that's going to, uh, uh, people getting a haircut is going to affect, bottom line, the demographic of, of people being most at risk of this uh, pandemic. Well, Clay, it is not just the elderly who are with pre-existing conditions who are getting sick. It is also younger people who, who are getting sick. So we hope that uh, your employees, that they I stay well. That that we perspective, hope that, but I believe statistically, uh, statistically can, can do this safely uh, and, I believe and follow the guidelines of uh, the U.S. health well, professionals like Dr. Anthony Fauci. But Clay Clark, we appreciate your time. Thank you for, for, your, for joining us. Okay. Okay. Well, Japan potentially has a health care crisis on its hands. Hospitals are, are rejecting the sick. Frontline workers say they don't have enough equipment. And there's more. The full story is next.